Here, you're really up for coming with us? I am. Whenever you're ready. Well, whenever your father's ready, I should say. If my counsel might help you towards the answers you seek, it's the least I can do to repay you. Plus, I think it will do me well to see the light of Elfheim again. Hmm. That elf light is some good shit. So, where did this plan come from? Oh, from Mimir, of course. I was merely asking how you found me, and he explained the secret prophecies inside the Yodnar shrines. Fascinating. From there, we sent to taking stock of which shrines we'd seen, at which point your father recalled finding growers outside the Temple of Light. And now that we can actually go to Alphine, the prudent course of action became self-evident. Nary a last step for the world's smartest man. Even without feet, if you'll forgive the levity. I was always fond of her talks, you know? Aye. And it's good to see you a free man again, old friend. And thanks to you as well, Brock. These clothes do better than I deserve. Darn straight! And never mind what Brock had to trade the landlord to get that Intrasil seed for you. The landlord? He's not the landlord! <laughs> uh, okay. At your service. Whatever you need. I'll heat up the forge. He really did it. Tyr really slept in my broom closet. Is that normal for you tall, godly sorts? Or just the ones locked up for a lifetime or two?
Right behind you. I'll meet you at the gateway presently, friends. Mind if I take a little peek at you? I promise I'll be brief. <clears throat> My goodness, what a strapping physique. Capable of an astounding variety of acts of violence, I imagine. What is happening? Uh, this must be the squirrel that tends the world tree. That delectable aroma. Could it be? Pardon the intrusion. Ah, yes. Amber resin. Delightfully nutty with a hint of squidding. No. Not one for gastronomic exploration, I see. Wait. If you're Raditz Hosker, why are you so different when we summon you for help? It's a long story. <laughs> but you are correct. I am indeed Raditz Hosker. The one you know as Raditz Hosker is merely one of my spectral aspects. And a particularly nasty one at that. I consider him so far removed from myself that he's practically a different person. Speaking of... Bitter, would you like to come out and see your friends? Park off! I'm busy! I suppose that was to be expected. Anyway... <clears throat> now that I've polished off all this resin for you, would you like the seed back? It is the seed. Indeed. A seed of Yggdrasil, to be precise. <clears throat> Since my dwarven tenants performed their little reconfiguration, you'll need seeds like these to open up new destinations on my tree. <laughs> Your tree, huh? Yes, my tree. Here, let me show you. So that's why good Master Brock needed an Alpine seed. Clearly, you have important matters afoot. Time remains at your disposal if you have unresolved business amongst the dwarves. If we're not going to Alfheim yet, it's probably best for Tyr to wait for us here. Back to Svartalfheim, huh? We still have unfinished business there. The mining rigs I helped construct still belch their acrid smoke into the air. Sounds good. Soldiers we fought in Svartalfheim. Those were Enriar? I thought Enriar were just spirits in Valhalla until Ragnarok comes. They were no spirits. Indeed, brother. Odin appears to have found a loophole. Activated his forces early as a standing army. Perhaps something he could only do without any honest Valkyries around to stand in his way.
Father, is it always moral to kill something that's trying to kill you? Yes. Well, there you have it, look. Okay, what other terrible things have Odin and Thor done? And there was Thrym the Cunning, the giant king who stole Thor's hammer. Odin traded him Freya to get it back, then sent Thor in disguise to murder his entire court. Who else? Ah, Thrym near the Brawler, the stone giant. Aye, mocked by Odin, murdered by Thor. Enough of this. But there's more. is not the answer. So not all dwarves can do that thing Brock and Sindri do, right? Or they just walk between realms and turn up somewhere else? Indeed, that's a rare skill. I gather one carefully cultivated by some secretive dwarven guild or other. Probably for the best. Them alone doing it is disconcerting enough. That dragon... ...culture's not bad.
Not the first time someone's told me that, I suppose. Careful. What is that? Dead. Uh, what is it, Mamir? That's nothing, brother. Just 
you ever have those moments when you wish you could go back? Rewrite your own past. Make different decisions. Journeying through time is more trouble than it is worth. Ah, uh, fair point. You're speaking metaphorically, right? No. Of course you're not. Ugh, I hate the bay. The smoke from the rigs, it... My throat closes up. <clears throat> Appreciate it. No. It's still here. What? The island near the geyser. We need to get the key from it and unlock this door. We need... I need... to set right a very old wrong. What's behind the door? A prisoner. Of sorts. <clears throat> I know this sounds weird, but can you tell me again what happens when someone dies? Every living thing has a soul, and every soul has four parts. 
form, mind, direction, and luck. Direction steers the souls of giants, dwarves, elves, and animals toward the Lake of Souls in Alfheim, that all the parts may be absorbed back into Alfheim's great light. So that's where Fenrir is? The Lake of Souls? So long as his soul still has its direction, aye, it's well on its way. Here. What's the deal with Odin's ravens? They can just transport him anywhere? Except for the realm between realms. Thankfully. Why? Harder to find, thanks to dwarven enchantments and Yggdrasil's very own nature. Hmm. Lucky us. Hello? Huh. Who's abandoned?
while ago, you mentioned Odin's ravens. What's to stop him from using them to pop into existence and kidnap anybody he wants? Consent. The only way to travel by Odin's ravens is by your own choice. Oh, it's not so bad then. <laughs> Look, another mining rig. Another mining rig on this island, brother. Smell that smoke. Why would the dwarves agree to work for the Aesir in the first place? That's the heart of it, eh? You lied to them. I lied. <laughs> Bet we could swing across that, uh, lift thing. Gotta be the right spot. Those barrels. I smell fuel. Bet a spark from your blades would cause quite a boom.
I think we could break through the ground here. If you found a high enough place to drop from. Surprised the dwarves didn't shut these rigs off themselves. Why not you tried? The Ein Haryar made examples of them. They killed the dwarves? Couldn't you have convinced them not to? Aye. Impressive. That should help.
Yeah, that looks right. Smiths of Svartal find the creation of a weapon was a sacred thing. But Odin just wanted as many blades as he could get as fast as he could get them. With every stolen resource and mediocre blade, the dwarves lost a bit of themselves. survived because of you. Ah, you're not wrong there, brother. Odin would have wiped out every last dwarf in Svartalfheim if he couldn't use their skills. Talking about how Fenrir's soul is headed for the light of Alphon. But that's because he was a wolf, right? Aye. Were he a god or a human who died in battle, a Valkyrie would have taken him to Valhalla or Folkvonger. Had he been a human or god who died outside of battle, he'd be cast down to Helheim. But Fenrir was a wolf, so his soul will join all the others in Alfheim. Like mothers. Yes. Like your mothers. Pure Svartalfheim slag? Give it here. I'm here for you.
May it strike true. Their deaths will be painless. Ish. That ought to hurt him. Have we more to talk about? Do you believe in fate, Sindri? Oh, of course not. You think I'd wash my hands this much if I thought that what I do doesn't ultimately matter? There's only one thing with any say over how we live our lives, and that's us. You said souls come in four parts. Does that mean you can lose some of your soul, but not all of it? Aye. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Lose any one of them, and the entire being suffers. Still, sometimes luck alone is enough. Just ask your father. My success does not come from luck. Ah, the refrain of the eternally lucky. There you are. I knew you hadn't forgotten me. Master Kratos, I would speak with you. Dear, do you know Ratatosker? Of course. We were just catching up in your absence. Of the squirrels I've conversed with, he's easily the most dapper. Speak. If you are ever in need of my services and I am not present, I have installed these handy chimes for you to notify me. Simply throw your axe and strike the chimes, and I will attend to your needs. Would you care to take a practice throw? <laughs> a magnificent throw, Master Kratos. Truly a seasoned pro. Very well. You know how to reach me now. All that said, I'm happy to discuss anything else on your mind. I have a question. Splendid! I delight in offering my tutelage to the Inquisitive. Over the ledge, by the gateway over there. I noticed these dragons. Dragons? Oh no, young master Atreus. Those are leaned worms, the brood of Neithog. Neithog? That's the mother? Correct. She's also a vital piece of the Yggdrasilian circle of life, as it were. I tend the branches up here, while Neithog chews the roots from below to prevent overgrowth. A delicate balance. So they're friendly? Well, they're not nearly so affable as myself, but there's no reason to expect hostility so long as they're left in peace. Neithog is a stern matriarch, as protective of her offspring as she is determined to teach them proper discipline. That sounds... familiar. Hmm. Farewell for now, Master Kratos and Retinue.